Well, I found this script uh, as a result of my relationship with Rashad Ernesto Green, who is a three-time recipient of our scholarship from the National Hispanic Foundation for the Arts. It's a foundation that we do in D.C. We have a yearly uh, fundraiser to raise money to help kids who are excelling in their schools, uh, Ivy League, certain Ivy League schools. If you have a high, high enough grade point average and if you write to us and tell us why you want our help, we, we hand out scholarships. and They're not change your life scholarships, but it's a, every bit helps. But more importantly, what we offer is connectivity. Because it's not just what you know, but who you know that determines what you do for a living, you know, and if, and if they keep coming back to you because they know you. So I, uh, I remember Rashad came up to me for one of the years and says, listen, um, I got the script. It's almost ready. Um, it's based on a true story, and I wrote it with you in mind. And at that point, okay, okay, sure, what do you got? How most of the time you get these things and it's, you know, nice try, but, you know, come back next year. I read this and I said, wow. I mean, I, I, I really, I was upset that it ended. You know, it's kind of like I wanted to see more because I felt like I was looking at something I did not have access to all the time. You know, the inner workings of a family with an issue, you know, with sexual identity issues, with, with the son. As the father comes out of prison, and you know what the funny thing is that the, you can make so many a a analogies. He went into one prison, but he was still imprisoned by his belief system. He was still imprisoned by his attitudes, his unevolved attitudes towards his child's sexual identity. Rashad came to me with this one script, and uh, you know he's he's put everything he has into it, and and it shows. It's a real impressive debut. For an artist whose you know background is similar to mine, nothing fancy. Uh, he went to NYU Film School with uh, Spike Lee as a, as a mentor and teacher. Um, but more importantly, he knows that if this film he knew did not have a real authentic transgender central character that we can not only identify with but fall in love with. You, you love Harmony by the end of this story, you know, and uh, it's, it's pretty amazing because I, I know for a fact, if people like my character go see this movie, they won't feel the same way they did before they walked in. I'm not saying that they're going to go ahead and, you know, buy a, a, a big old, you know, ball gown and, you know, go crazy and like, you know, be the biggest cheerleader, but they will give themselves the room to love. They're children who are different from their expectations. And really, that's, that's what this movie's really about. It's not a gay film. It's not a transgender film. It's not a Latino film. It is a universal story that deals with the horrors of not seeing your expectations come to life. It's a horror for the parent. It's, it, and that's what I love about the script. Nobody's a real bad guy in this movie. You don't need a bad guy. Because everybody's trying to help each other to no end. And the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I mean, my character wants to save his son from a life of victimization, from a life of marginalization, from being laughed at and, and spit upon. Because when you're a Latin kid, that's what your parents tell you. You don't want to be like that. Those people get spit upon. I loved the fact that, you know, here I am, a person who's very modern, very, supposedly, you know, very liberal, yet conservative. I don't think any of us are anyone all the way. I know so many gay conservative, lit, log cabin Republicans, you know, I always thought, how does that work? But people have a certain desire to be a certain way. And their sexuality is, is like an addendum, you know, it shouldn't define their politics. So what I loved is, being all progressive and understanding, and I love, quote unquote, drag queens. Because my friend used to always have great banter. They always have the best returns. They, they, man, they will set you straight quick. So I have a, 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 an affinity. I loved the movie Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I thought it was brilliant. Those actors, most of them were straight, I believe, did a great job. But that wouldn't have worked in this film. We needed an authentic transgender actress because 
if you were an actor, you'd be going, wow, what a good actor. And you wouldn't know. What I found out is that my own ability to love was enhanced by this movie. And I thought, I, already, I was already there. I thought, well, you know. But it's such a beautifully nuanced performance and it just rolls out. It creeps up on you, this movie. It's hard to do, to show clips because there's so much air. There's so much behavior between some of the lines that it's like, okay, you know, on a short clip, it's like I tell people, no one scene does this movie. No one scene describes it completely. This is a layered piece. And every layer, you know, has its effect, but it's not obvious. But by the end of this movie, your guts are ripped out. Because you know these people love each other, but they can't somehow, you know, connect in, in, in a healthy way. So I, I love that this has enhanced my own ability to, to care for and respect people trapped in a different body than their spirit. Yes, I was surprised that I had to work on my Bronxness. I thought, okay, yo, I'm from the Bronx, you know, ain't no problem. Yo, what's up, papi? But the director, Rashad, was very, very insistent that I not do New York, Italian. I'm not playing a cop. He goes, yo, yo, you know, you sound like NYPD Blue. You almost sound like an Italian there. And I, I really had to check myself and go, wow, I've been in California a little too long. So I, I, I got a place in the deepest, darkest Bronx, and I absorbed the city vibe, the biorhythm. Uh, another surprise was just how amazing Harmony comes off in this film. You know, she's not a real experienced actress. So it was a big risk for the director, for all of us, to put all the time and energy work on this movie on the line for someone who, you know, we didn't know whether... I mean, if you, if you make this movie wrong, it will be unintentionally funny. And that's not what we wanted. If you also go the other way with that, it could be unintentionally dreary and depressing. We don't want that. So this is a real tight rope walk. And I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, by just how amazing uh, Harmony's performance was, uh, you know, because we cut around certain things and we used the best. And man, you would think she's been acting for a while and or it doesn't matter. You just fall in love with that beautiful face, incredible eyes and those lips. My God, Angelina Jolie wants her lips back. <laughs> I think I want them to walk away with an increased sense of humanity. An enhanced ability to love. And another take on people that they may have thought they knew enough about. From people who have actually seen the film, I would have to say about 98% has been like, oh my God, I had no idea. I thought I was walking into another kind of film. I'm talking about little old ladies. I'm like the white people, Asian people, black people. are like, yo, thank you. This is a powerful film. Latinos, you know. The response is like they're subdued walking out of the theater. I've come to a few Q&As and I get there... Right at the end, I see people walking out. I'm like, are they upset? Did they not like the movie? And I walk in, and I see 80% of the audience stayed. Mm. I'm like, good sign. They care. And the response has been like, this is important. Like, people, sh this should be required viewing in, like, junior high schools and up. Because there's no reason that after all this technology, all this time of supposedly evolving into an incredible, you know, human race that can do so much, you can land people on the moon, but you can't love your fellow human beings that are caught between, you know, trapped between the sexes. That's what it is. You can't love them. Are they that wrong? You know, this movie helps you look at your own prejudices. And the other 2%? The other 2%. I don't know. I, I, I read a review on our first reviews out of Sundance, which was incredible. The standing ovation sold out every time. People yelling and screaming. And this is Sundance. This wasn't Outfest or, or Frameline. 
Sundance is just mainstream, but they're movie people. And they have large gay contingent. But when they were cheering and screaming, and then a reviewer gave us a snarky review that said it was swimming in a sea of cliches. Well, obviously, they don't know our community because, well, we're not trying to whitewash and say, hell, we're no cliches at all. Cliches are based on reality. Yeah, we have a lot of people in jail. Yeah, we have a lot of strife in our communities. Yeah, we have a lot of machismo that, you know, doesn't know how to deal. You may think that's a cliche, but it's like saying, you know, a love story is a cliche because a man's in love with a woman. Oh, how many times have we seen that before? I mean, come on. They were very snarky, and I think... If you read the review, you realize they did not really watch the film. Maybe they resented the audience's reaction and they had to give it a poo-poo. Maybe, maybe they have relationships with studios who have millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of product and they've seen all the other good reviews and go, well, I got to give a bad one. Because honestly, I just, I'm like, this person didn't see this movie. They must have gone to the bathroom for three quarters of it. Based on what was written. I realized, wow, there's pushback. And I have a feeling that the reviewer was gay. So what I learned, surprising thing I learned to answer your other question, is that not all gay people identify with the TG community. They don't like being lumped into the same bag. It's not the same. And I had to take back a step and go, they're right. You can't assume because some person's gay that they totally understand the transgender experience. A whole nother ballgame, so to speak.